Okay, question so far. We're going to try to answer the question whether this string can be generated by this grammar. And if you want to fiddle around with the grammar and just kind of brute force or play with it, you can try to figure it out yourself. And then I'll show you how the machine is going to do it. Are there questions? Ready to go on? The basic idea is that we're going to try to figure out for each of these non-terminals what substrings of this string they can generate. For example, let's say I knew that B could generate 110 and I knew that C could generate 100. Then for sure I would know that A can generate this whole string because A generates BC and B generates the first half and C generates the second half. If I know what small pieces of this string are generated by the other non-terminals, I can look at A and see if I put those two together whether I get my whole string. So let's say I know that B generates the single string one and C generates these five, same thing. I can get that A generates the whole string. There's a lot of places to split this string up. I can split it 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1. So we're going to somehow try to build up all the different substrings of this string and which non-terminals can generate them. And then build those up in terms of each other recursively until we find out which non-terminals can generate the whole string. And if the start symbol is among those, then we say yes. And if the start symbol is not among those, we say no. In this case, A is the start symbol. OK, questions so far? So I need one notation, and then we'll do some details. Here's a notation we'll use. We'll call this VIJ. This is going to be all the non-terminals that can generate a certain piece of the string. I'll tell you what piece in a second. All the non-terminals. that generate J symbols of this string, J symbols of your string, starting from symbol I. So we need that notation because this is going to give us a way to identify every single piece of the string and which non-terminals can generate it. For example, let's do a particular example. Let's do, uh, let's do V41. V41 are all the non-terminals that can generate one symbol starting at position 4 of this string. 1, 2, 3, 4. That means the single string 1. Which non-terminals can generate the single string 1? A and C. Why is that so easy? Because Chomsky normal form is the nicest, simplest form in the world. You just look it up, and there they are. If it generates a single 1, it's got to be there in a production. So this equals the set A and C. How about V? Uh, 3, 1. What does V3, 1 refer to? Again, one symbol starting in the third position. And what generates that? B and C. All keto. Who thinks they get that notation? All right. This is the base case. These are the ones that you can just look at and figure out yourself. When j gets bigger, it's going to be harder. And it's going to be based on smaller cases that we've already computed. And we're going to do this in a bottom-up dynamic programming style, because if we did it just recursively, we would compute the same base cases many, many, many times. And that we're, that's where the exponentiation would occur. We want to avoid that. So we're going to do these once from the bottom up, store them, and work our way upward from the bottom toward the ideal. What's the ideal? And then I'll answer your question in a second, Joe. I saw your hand. What we really want to find out is V15. I mean 6. V16. 
We want to find out which non-terminals generate six symbols of this string starting in position one. That will give me the answer I'm looking for. And V16 hopefully will be based on these smaller cases. All right, Joe, you had a question? You mean for the I symbol? To, when I say I'm starting from the second symbol? Yeah. From the left. So V41 is 1, 2, 3, 4, and then one symbol from here, meaning just that one. V15 means 1, and five symbols to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? Let's make a big table. V. Here's J, here's I. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's fill in the base case as we know it, and work our way to higher cases. The cases will work from left to right. J equals 1 will be the first base case, because those are substrings of length 1, all the way up to substrings of length 6. We're going to work this way. It doesn't matter how we do it up and down, so we can start any place. All right, so V, uh, v of 1, 1. That means what are all the non-terminals that can generate one symbol starting in the first position. What are they? That's the symbol one. AC. Agreed? What about 2-1? That's the next single symbol string over to the right. That's another, another one. All right. What about the next one? We can do the next one. Neil, you got this stuff? You making sense? BC. Right, BC, because it's a single zero? Next one is a one, right? So it's AC again. And then there's a two more zeros, so two BCs. OK. All right, now we move over to the next column. And the next, now we have to think a little bit, because this was just the base case, and the next column is going to have to be something that is dependent on the first column. And we'll do the same thing. We'll go down in order. But now, we're only going to go this far. Why don't we go up to here? Right, 6, 2 means you go off the end of the string. There's no two symbols past the sixth one. So. This table gets filled up only about halfway. The diagonal is going to go up this way. All right, so what does 1, 2 depend on? Let's look at it. 1, 2 means what are the non-terminals that generate these two symbols? Starting in the first spot, two symbols over. It depends. Let's write this down. I want to make sure you get this, even though you can eyeball it and tell me, but I want you to think about it. It depends on two other values of v. The left side of this and the right side. This one is V11, and this one is V21. It depends on V11 and V21. Let's look at V11 and V21. They're here and here. And let's ask ourselves, is there any way to combine these with this one on the left and this one on the right and get productive?